what did I say? As of now, Red's eyes are still white and innocent, and I hope it stays that way. What did I say? I'm a little worried his vibrant blue would drain off as the series goes. What did I say? Um, okay, I'm trying to calm down here, but oh my goodness gracious, I am freaking the heck out. I am scared. No, I am terrified. Before I continue watching this video, I highly recommend watching my first video on my theories of the series. I want to apologize for the confusion with the names. Magenta's actually called Pink and Pink's called Lilac. I would have known this sooner if I checked Victadian's community post, and I would have also known that Red doesn't have borderline personality disorder. Thank you, Add Any Name Here and Sakura and Carousel for pointing that out. It made me check the community post and discover some more lore. Also, thank you so much, Victadian, for posting my video on there. It feels so surreal how I went from 7 subscribers to more than 100 overnight. So, I also want to thank my beautiful Mipsies. I want to thank my family too. My friends. I love you, God! Okay, okay, I'll start now. So sit back, relax, and please watch me ramble. Right into the video, something's different. Blue usually looks cheerful in the intros, but this time he looks terrified. There are devil horns and a smile drawn over him, and there is black lipstick on his face left by pink. The tie has turned red, so that means purple has successfully corrupted red. But purple isn't fully to blame for red's corruption though. Red was already harassing Blue before purple started grooming her. In the video, purple was telling her how Blue likes. Smegs. So that's why he likes pink and how he's not interested in love so he doesn't like red because she's so pure and that means she's far below pink. I'm not sure what purple's game is anymore but I have two theories. My first is that maybe she was trying to warn red when she told her blue likes fire so red would get over blue and my second is maybe purple was trying to get red to be more against pink by implying she doesn't stand a chance against her. That's why we see an arrow down next to her, but either way, Red misinterpreted whatever she was implying, thinking she meant in order to get Blue to love her, she has to... Can I say this? Um... Smegualize... herself. I didn't think it was possible for Burby to look as horrified as she did, but I mean, I guess that's one way of traumatizing your groomer. Red thanked Purple and told her she's right and Purple lost interest in their conversation, telling her to just go to blue and do whatever. You can see her ties back to being white. The reason why Purple lost interest in Red is because she's no longer innocent. You can see Red's eyes are no longer white but black, and she has those circular corruption thingies that Purple usually has. Blue is oddly jumpy and with the lipstick on his face, I think he just came out from Pink's office. That's why in the next scene he's still tense with pink lights at him, but it calms down because Pink's not there and it's just Red, who he's not uncomfortable around since he's he's just innocent. Well, not yet at least. Also, Blue might be drinking coffee, but trust me, there is tea in there. I apologize for my bad joke. On Victorian's community post, they wrote a poem titled I Love My Sweet Sour Coffee and it goes, On the sofa, thoughts of my escapism. My sweet sour coffee waiting its boiling point. Bubbles bursting, smoke escaping. One stone poured into my blue cup. Don't let the wave touch the edge. Now my favorite coffee. Shh. It's a secret. It is mine and only mine. A pitiful triplet spoon of coffee, then separate the triplets for sweetness. I find intimacy with the white crystal. I hate sour coffee, I hate sour coffee, I hate to think about the sweet, blue, sweet, sweet. Lastly, the milk. Does anyone use powdered milk? I always bought others milk. Sour taste I hate. Powdered milk doesn't need care. Powdered milk lasts longer. The clouds fall into the dark brown sea. I would give anything to be in it. Swimming in my sweet, sour coffee. Floating in my warm coffee. I will taste it. It will be a bit too sweet. Way too sweet. I will want to sparkle more sweet. But I will know it's to hide the sourness. She left the sofa. I can finally get some coffee. The poem is in Blue's perspective. He's on a sofa with Pink. I think Pink is the same Blue, so in order to distract himself, he's thinking of his coffee, which he loves. He says how he would add more sweetness to his coffee to mask the sourness, meaning he's trying to mask his sadness. When Pink leaves the couch, he's relieved and says how he'll finally be able to get some sweet, sweet coffee to get rid of the sourness Pink gave him. So I think this further solidifies my theory that he had just left Pink's office, which was why he had lipstick on his face and was drunk when Red went over to see him. We see an old memory of Lavender when she was a kid wearing a doctor's costume saying you're my playboy. I'm pretty sure she was playing doctor with Blue as a kid just so she could fill his chest with her stethoscope and that's probably why her face is blurred out. It was probably a memory Blue was trying to forget. That's why there's a blue question mark because he buried the memory so deep he'd forgotten about it. Then Pink says you're my play toy and we all know what she means by that. Then it cuts to Red saying he's her lover, her friend. 
Her eyes are wide showing how that's how she truly sees him. She doesn't see him as an object to play with, but unfortunately she's got bad actions. Boo at that point is just tired with her flirting. He's upset but not shaking or anything, because at that moment he still sees her as innocent and so is still somewhat comfortable around her. But he also sees her as sour so he ignores her and drinks his coffee to get more sweetness. In the next scene we see a board where Red's trying to see what Blue likes. She notes how pink dress is... <sighs> Smegzy and how she flirts with Blue. She also tries to see what he likes and she notes how he loves coffee in his work. She also has a picture of possible outfits he might like. She also notes how he cares about her and shows it with physical touch, so she tried replicating it, but it doesn't seem she noticed she hurt him the time she tried touching him. And the reason why she probably didn't notice it is because she's blinded by her love. When Red says, sweet little bumblebee, I know what you want from me, she thinks that what he wants from her is smacks. He tried getting away from her when her advances were getting way too much, but she continued to harass him, ignoring his discomfort. She kept trying to hold his hand, and like I said earlier, it's because he showed affection to her through his physical touch. So she wants that from him, and she's trying to show him that she loves him by touching him. That's why in the chorus she draws two strokes together. I think it was meant to be their hands holding each other, but they become hard to see when the chorus repeats when she's corrupted, showing how her bad actions have stained her innocent display of affection. She continues harassing him, so he tries going to his sister, asking her to rescue him. <sighs> At the end of the video when his eyes turned black, there was no expression on his face. I think it showed how he was done with Lavender, so in future videos with her, I don't think he's going to trust her again. Will that age like milk? I think even though Boo knows how Lavender is, and it's not even the first time she's betrayed him, he still went over to her because he still had some trust in her, since they're meant to be family and family's supposed to have your back, no matter what. But unfortunately, Lavender doesn't see anything wrong with Red, but does notice how tense up Blue is, and what's that? She actually shows empathy? Is she going to be a good sister for once and protect him? Oh wait, no, she doesn't take him seriously and tells him she's gotta go see Purple and if she's late, Purple will get mad. He tries to stop her from leaving by grabbing onto her jacket, but he couldn't stop her. You can see her jacket is no longer blue, showing how she failed to protect him. I think this is also meant to show when male victims speak out, they're not taken seriously because society sees women as innocent little angels. So maybe it wasn't just Lavender not caring, but also her genuinely thinking Red is innocent. A comment on my first theory video about the series point out that maybe Lavender had left Blue with Pink in this shut up sleep with me meme because she genuinely thought Pink was a good person and probably thought Blue was just being paranoid or something. I agree with them, but it doesn't excuse her actions. Even if you think someone's nice, if you see they're making someone uncomfortable, you should intervene. When Blue is trying to wipe away his tears with Lavender's jacket, Red shows up for more harassment. Yay! When she tries getting his attention, she's upset because he's not reacting to her, since she expected him to since she's acting like Pink. Even though it's Red that's assaulting Blue, he still feels guilty because he's the older one. Blue is 25 while Red is 19. He feels ashamed because he knows how society will see him. They'll see him as a demon, the guilty one. They showed clips of himself showing how he's the bad guy taking advantage of all the women around him, that he's the one that wants you know what from Red. He's the one that was flirting with Pink even though she was married. They asked him if he was so innocent, why didn't he run away from Red? Why didn't he push her off him when she kissed him? Why did he keep quiet instead of lashing out at her? If you were ever in a situation like Blue where you freezed instead of running away, don't feel guilty about it. It doesn't mean you liked it or you were consenting to it. Blue has no mouth in this entire video and that shows he had no voice, so even though he froze, he didn't consent to any of the abuse. Blue smashes the TV as it's painful to watch. I also think it's a metaphor for how his view of himself has shattered, causing him to be ashamed of himself. He even believes he should be in jail. I think seeing him in that state made Red finally see how bad her actions were affecting him, because her eyes go back to being white again. But the damage has already been done. I think Blue's starting to lose his sanity, and after seeing the sneak peeks of other videos, Yikes. All the videos seem to show that he's enduring the abuse. Well, except for one where he becomes fiery blue and he's saying no. So maybe he snaps. In the video using the song Cruos, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, blue looks kinda, well, a little insane. So I checked out the song and if you read the lyrics, he's losing it. Some lyrics in the song stood out to me. If you don't want to hear me analyzing the song, you can skip this part. Okay, if you decide to stay to watch this, please keep in mind that Vic Tadon said they may not use this song if they find one they think fits the episode better, so my analysis may not be completely accurate to what they envisioned for the episode.
In the beginning of the song it says, Tomorrow it seems the world is a frenzy free for all. How disgusting. This could be referring to his abusers and how they are able to go around freely. The next one is, This has nothing to do with me. It just eats at your head. How boisterous. The way I interpret this through Blue's POV is him saying how the fact they get away with it eats at his head, making him pissed off. Getting close to snapping, I guess. In part of the chorus it goes, Let's scream, let's scream. Probably his inner thoughts scrambling. Another part says, I'm sorry for my clumsiness, though I have no intent for apology. I think this shows that Blue no longer cares about being polite or cheerful. He's just indifferent. Every day when my heart gets taken, this is about when he's being abused by the rest. Terrible, terrible, why this is a bore, let's completely forget and teeter into dance. This kind of reminds me of Victaden's poem when Blue was thinking of how sour pink is and was trying to distract himself by thinking of sweet coffee. It repeats terrible, terrible, how boring this is. Let's forget about work and just get crazy. This to me is bad, because if you see the sweet little bumblebee meme, when red and purple were looking at what blue likes, we see that blue enjoys his work, so if he's neglecting it, then I think this proves he's really not okay. When I bang our heads till the morning comes, I think there's not much else to say here, he's losing it. I can't see myself anymore, I don't know, I don't know. This shows that he can no longer recognize himself, he's no longer the cheerful innocent guy he used to be. I want to flee from myself, I don't know, I don't know. He doesn't want to be this version of himself. If so, if that's the case, then I'm scared of the world. He's scared of everyone around him. I mean, we already saw how jumpy he was in the little bumblebee meme. If speaking out is a harm, then I'm scared of people. He doesn't think he can talk about his abuse because he thinks no one will believe him since he's the demon, so he's scared of people. It's love or something, how agile your tongue is. Are you satisfied now? I think Blue is now talking most likely to Pink and is standing up for himself, telling her, You say what we're doing is love? Well, are you satisfied with how much of a wreck I am now because of your love? But I don't think he'll snap and be direct in this video so he'll probably not be telling her this directly but in his inner thoughts. As far as I look, there's definitely no such thing as love. Since Blue used to love Pink but is not being assayed by her, I think that has made him rethink if love is even real, especially for her to say she loves him while abusing him at the end. If she can do that then surely it means love does not exist. It is a charisma that is hiding something, so there isn't the real you so that doesn't exist. He's having an existential crisis. I think with the events of the Bumblebee meeting, with how old scenes of him were fabricated to show him being the bad guy all along, it has made him believe he's not a victim at all. The old cheerful him was all a lie. He was never innocent. I'm tired. I have no allies. Just my expectations. Just my mimicry. Blue is all alone. He has no one to help him. It reminds me of a post Victoria made about how sometimes you only have yourself. Let's go on a journey, pa pa pa. If it's just the fun stuff, I don't give a damn. I think Blue's starting to turn to alcohol for his problems. Anyway, that was my analysis of the song in connection to Blue. Tell me what you think in the comments. Victoria mentioned that it'll be the last time we'll see Red except for flashbacks. Maybe she left because she finally saw her bad actions, so she's trying to separate herself from him for his sake. But maybe she was an intern and her time with them was over, or it could be that someone caught them, that's why it looks like they're in a closet and someone's opening it, so they blamed Blue and took Red somewhere else. That could be why we see someone dragging Red away in the end. Comment what you think because I do not know. Even though Red will be gone, I hope wherever she is she'll learn from her mistakes and become a better person. No matter how much you like someone, no means no. If they're not playing hard to get, no is no. I get it, reject is tough, but there are tons of other people in the world who would probably like you. I mean, there are more than 7 billion people on this planet. It's not the end of the world if your crush doesn't like you back, and trust me, harassing them would definitely not make them like you any better. In fact, it would probably do the opposite. I had a friend in school I was close to, and they confessed they liked me. I told them I didn't feel the same way, and like Will, I told them we could still be friends, and we still remained friends. But they constantly flirt with me, and I tell them I'm uncomfortable, but they just didn't care. They even tried kissing me, so I pushed them off me. But they acted hurt and tried to make me feel guilty when I had told them several times I do not like them. Do you think we're still friends? If you do, then you'd be wrong. So if you like someone and they reject you, please, move on. Don't force it or else you might end up hurting them. Thank you for staying this long. Please like and subscribe to become a Mipsy. It has been scientifically proven that when you become one, good things happen to you. Don't believe me? Try right now.